Tista Satalwad has been the most stridently, yes, the most stridently shrill critic of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. She has stood up in court to fight communalism in the context of the Gujarat riots. But few know that she stands indicted of spewing communal venom in school textbooks meant for teachers. How are we saying this? Let us get to the hard facts. Times now has accessed an HRD committee report that makes sensational claim accusing Tista of spreading and promoting enmity between communities. We know about this. This report has been out there. But for the first time, we are going to tell you, and that's hard fact too, for the first time we are going to tell you the highly inflammatory literature produced by Tista's NGO for teachers, that has never been revealed. So we're going to bring out, we're going to bring out what exactly Tista Settelwad's NGO printed, published for teachers to read and by extension inform impressionable minds between the ages of 8 and 14 in schools across certain districts of Maharashtra. The Solicitor General, and this is hard fact three, undisputable, of India has recommended filing charges under section 153A, 153B, sections very serious, which seem to suggest that Tista Satalwad, through her NGO's writings, was promoting enmity between various social groups. The note has been submitted is presently with the HRD ministry. In fact, it was submitted a few months ago. Now, for the first time, let's break this story down. Let's break this story down and present to you the excerpts which we have accessed, which we have accessed, which build the case around Tista Setilvat. Mega Prasad has accessed these papers, has accessed, in fact, each one of these excerpts and we've pieced together all of this in extensive detail. Mega, take us through some of these excerpts, excerpt one, for instance. Rahul, uh, before we get to the excerpts, uh, just for the benefit of our viewers, this particular report that we're talking about, the report that you showed, yeah. this report, of course, uh, was uh, an outcome of a complaint that was given by Reyes Khan, a person who was earlier, you know, the right-hand person of Tisa Setilwad, they fell apart. This complaint had gone to the ministry on 9th May 2014. Thereafter, a committee was constituted by the HRD ministry, a three-member committee. All that is known, of course. Yes. It's in the public and, domain. We, uh, are not, we are not going to make claims as to exclusive claims that already exist in the public domain. What we are going to get to are the excerpts. The excerpts, because this committee, Mega, if I'm not mistaken, sat over three or four months to put together this report. Yeah, that's right. It sifted through lots of literature. And that literature now, Mega, you have. The report, the committee actually sat from Feb till June of 2015. Yeah. And the report, of course, that you're showing, Rahul, that is what they have produced. Now, except one uh, from this report, it, I'm reading it out. It says, and you know, these are from the booklets. These are the readers for the teachers, and these teachers are meant to teach young minds of class, class six five. and class five. Yes, of so the Don Bosco minds. School in Matunga. Exactly, Don Bosco School in Matunga in Mumbai. Yeah. And I'm reading out from those readers. The first excerpt, Rahul, is this. Most of all, did the rulers of only one denomination, for example, in our case, Muslims, have these aggressor invader motives? What about Hindu rulers or Buddhist ones in other contexts? This tendency of, to demonize only one section and not all is not simply a distortion of history, but is dangerous. That's what, that's what these textbooks said. Yes. And these were meant to be read by the teachers. For the benefit of our viewers, they're right there at the bottom of your screens. As we go through the excerpts, read them at the bottom of your screens. They're dense literature. Therefore, we've taken the trouble of spelling it all out. Uh, 
quite quite honestly bringing it out there on your screens. Mega, let's look at excerpt two. Excerpt two says Rahul, independent research has shown that the construction of the whole narrative of Hindu trauma around the raid against Somnath Temple by Mahmud Ghaznavi uh, is a phenomenon created since 1843 by the British and thereafter picked up as useful construct by Hindu communalists who are called nationalists and was not in fact a lived trauma. So this is really a political statement <coughs> that is being made to influence the minds of teachers who would then pass on this information to students. So here we have a situation where the entire so-called attack on the Somna temple has been dismissed and the suffering of the Hindu community has been dismissed really as not in fact a lived trauma. It never happened. It's all here in the minds of the aggrieved community. Let's right. have a look at excerpt 3, Mega. Excerpt 3, uh, the book says, who are the victims of a biased history? As we have seen before, sectarian ends have also been served by valorizing some figures and demonizing some others. Aurangzeb, Tipu Sultan, Mahmud Ghaznavi have been demonized, other figures have been valorized. So basically, all these figures have been selectively targeted, demonized, and in fact, that is not the, not the absolute truth. That's the, that's the inference to be drawn. Except for November 1998, RSS, BJP, VHP, Bajrang Dal organized five Rath Yatras all over Karnataka, whipping up anti-Muslim hatred. The committee has interpreted some of these writings and has said that in their purest, unleavened form, would create a sense of victimhood in the community or at least one community and they might in fact hold it against another community and therefore there is a charge here Megha quite clearly of promoting enmity between communities right let's that's just right. go through excerpt 5 in fact that's what she says in excerpt yeah. 5 she says Hindu being the majority expect that Muslims should be loyal to the country when the goals of some Muslims are different and their loyalties are elsewhere there arises strong reaction against this absolutely now this really forms the nub of this uh, entire expose these five excerpts there are several more obviously for the paucity of space etc and time most importantly we can't go through all the excerpts but these were the five um, excerpts we haven't cherry picked anything we've just picked them up in the order as they've appeared in the committee reports also and of course the literature that is in our possession I just want to bring in uh, I want to go across uh, to our executive editor Navika Kumar Navika Kumar Tista Setalwad has positioned herself as someone who exposes communalism that's why she stood up in court for about 10 to 12 years wanting to target Chief Minister Narendra Modi at that time and drag him into the Gujarat riot cases because she saw in her own self a duty she was performing to one particular community but when you look at some of these excerpts some of these writings it would go to show that perhaps she can no longer question either the Prime Minister Narendra Modi on this count or even the BJP President Amit Shah. Well, it's very correct, uh, uh, Rahul. For those who have a mindset issue, those who have a mindset problem to begin to question others uh, is, is really questionable itself. Who is Tista Sitalwad to question the then Chief Minister of Gujarat, Narendra Modi, the then uh, uh, Home Minister of Gujarat, Amit Shah, when she herself is in a position where she is uh, spreading hate? In fact, those five excerpts that you actually said, to me, the most offensive one is when she talks about the stereotyping of the Muslim community and she says that they want, uh, you know, the Hindus, majoritarian Hindus want the Muslims to love their country when their allegiance may lie elsewhere. Is she trying to be a spokesperson for all the Muslims in this country? Is she trying to say that Muslims in this country do not have love for their motherland? Uh, is that Tista Sitalwad who is doing disservice to the Muslim community who she says she actually represents? Uh, Questions need to be asked and what does she want impressionable minds in class 5 and class 6 to learn? That there is a stereotyping that is being done yeah. in our textbooks that Aurangzeb, Tipu Sultan and uh, Mahmood Ghaznavi are people who are being stereotyped only because there is one community that is being targeted. 
if that's not spreading hatred then what really is and who and is that's Sita, why Sital, why that's you really why point the, fingers at others that's why the solicitor general of india came out mega with an observation of his own after perusing this material and he said that she should be charged could you just read yeah. out the so operative is, part of the opinion just hold it up for our cameras yeah. so that uh, our viewers also see this opinion that so, has been proffered by the Solicitor General. Rahul, yes. this is a note that was uh, put up to the Minister, Mr. Javrekar. This is a two-page note and here is the main part of that note. Point number nine, the para nine, which talks about what the Solicitor General has said after looking at this report. And it says... Uh, the, in the opinion of uh, the Solicitor General, report of the inquiry committee is exhaustive and deals with every aspect of the matter and that action as suggested in the said report may be undertaken in terms of fixing liabilities, lapses, action for inciting disharmony there and hatred and also for recovery of the money as is stipulated okay. in the scheme itself. Reactions coming in, political fight already building up on this news report. Let's just pray out some of those reactions that are coming in. I believe the Bharatiya Janata Party, the Congress already ready trading charges let's just pull those out and was her trust eligible to receive any funds if it was eligible then the question would arise that what kind of material was being generated if that material created was not in the interest of education if it takes a fundamentally incorrect view tries to portray people in one particular manner tries to create an incorrect impression with young minds then that is incorrect and the third is if a for trust is not eligible and they have received funds, then they have to return those funds. Otherwise, broadly, what is the difference between this and somebody usurping public funds? This whole charge of Modi government is preposterous and laughable. We all know the uh, fixed match agenda of Modi ji and his government to target Tista Sitalwad, her NGO Sabrang, and the, and the poisonous manner in which false cases have, have been registered against Tista Sitalwad, against her husband and against everybody else who exposed the carnage of Gujarat. So Modi ji continues to seek revenge against everybody who brought out the truth of the Gujarat riots. Present is one more false criminal case being sought to be lodged against Tista Sitalwad and Sabrang but Modi ji must remember you cannot suppress the voice of truth ever.